morning. Good Chicles, the country church, Marion, Texas. A short drive to worship the Lord in a relaxed atmosphere. Good morning. Welcome. It's great to see everybody this morning. Welcome those viewing via live stream. Run, Jacob, run. I've heard that phrase before. Run, forest, run, something like that. Genesis, the 32nd chapter, beginning in verse 1. And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, unto the land of Seir, the country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Thus shall ye speak unto the Lord Esau. Thy servant Jacob saith thus, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed there until now. And I have oxen and asses, flocks and men servants and women servants, and I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. And the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to thy brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. That verse shouldn't surprise us. And he divided the people that was with him. And the flocks and herds and the camels into two bands and said, If Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said to, unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which thou hast showed unto thy servant. For with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two bands. Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. And thou saidest, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And he lodged there that same night and took of that which came to his hand a present for Esau his brother. Two hundred she-goats and twenty he-goats, two hundred ewes and twenty rams, thirty milch camels with their colts, forty kine and ten bulls, twenty she-asses and ten foals. And he delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by themselves, and said unto his servants, Pass over before me, and put a space betwixt drove and drove. And he commanded the foremost, saying, When Esau my brother meeteth thee, and asketh thee, saying, Whose art thou? And whither goest thou? And whose are these before thee? Then thou shalt say, They be thy servant Jacob's. It is a present sent unto my Lord Esau. And behold also, he is behind us. And so commanded he the second and the third and all that followed the droves, saying, On this manner shall ye speak unto Esau, when ye find him. And say ye moreover, Behold thy servant Jacob is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goeth before me, and afterward I will see his face. Peradventure he will accept of me. So went the present over before him, 
and himself lodged that night in the company. And he rose up that night and took his two wives and his two women servants and his eleven sons and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and for the blessing that it is to us. And Lord, we look forward to uh, hearing from our pastor as he expounds the truths uh, that we see in this passage. And Lord, I pray for Mike and David as they lead us in praise and worship. Uh, Father, that you would be elevated and exalted as you deserve. Uh, Father, help us to, to just take a moment and humble ourselves uh, before you and acknowledge that we're nothing apart from the Lord Jesus, that our praise might be special to you. And Father, I pray uh, for our pastor just to have your hand on him as he preaches. Father, we pray for those here today who um, continue to put off trusting you as Savior. Lord, I pray that today they would turn loose and let your Holy Spirit lead them to the Lord Jesus, and we'll give you glory. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Let's, uh, let's greet each other in the name of the Lord.
Let's go to him in prayer. <clears throat> Father, we just thank you for the privilege that's ours to be still right now and to thank you for what a great God that you are. Father, we welcome you in the services. Pray that you have the freedom, the access to every heart as you move up and down these aisles in this auditorium. And Father, may all of us be drawn to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And as people said, amen. amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. <clears throat> it's good to have each one of you. Always good to have guests. And if you're here for the first time, if you just raise your hand, the ushers want to extend to you a welcome packet. Wherever you're at, just hold them up just a second. They'll be right there by your side. All right. You might have to wave at them so that they can see you. And I know that some of you won't believe this, but Bob and Penny are celebrating 14 years of marriage right over here. Continue to pray for Penny. <laughs> Ed Pardee, where you at? There he is, turning 86 this week. And Bessie Rodriguez, where are you? Way in the back. Oh, way in the back, okay. Whom I call La Reina, the queen. She's going to be 79 on Tuesday. Praise the Lord for it. So, I always think of Art, her husband too. And right now he's creating all kinds of things in heaven. And as a lot of our folks had been, heaven's going to be a wonderful place, you know. It's like we said, because we know that's where our Savior is. And that's all we need to know about it. Amen. Amen. Okay. 
the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise the Lord to the King. Of praise the Father, sing. Praise the Father, praise the somebody, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. Let's praise forever to the King. By his grace I am redeemed, by his blood I am made clean, and I now can know him face to face. Oh, by his power I have been raised, hidden now in Christ by faith I will praise the glory of his grace by your grace Lord by your grace I am free thank you Lord by your blood I am made clean and I now can Because he lives, because he lives. 
choir makes their way down. Let's sing through that refrain again. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. this morning this message is entitled run Jacob run and I realized even if I couldn't do it at least I could preach about it (laughs) so here's Jacob who for years had run many miles in fear of his brother now with his wives his concubines his servants his flocks and his herds He's making his way home 20 years down the road. Let me ask you, has it been a long time since you've been home to the Lord? Maybe today you'll make your way home. Now notice the first six verses has us asking the question, two angels are 400 men. Jacob had two angels that came. Esau was coming with 400 men. And with Jacob, the name is pounding in his head. Esau. Esau's coming. Esau's coming. And he was afraid, the Bible says. But you know, the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18, but Jacob Jacob didn't have it. But he knows, God knows the needs of his people. And God sent two angels to remind Jacob of his promises. Hebrews 1, 14 says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Let me tell you something. If you hear somebody say, so-and-so died and now they're an angel in heaven, that's an untruth. We are higher. We have been created higher than the angels. And the Bible says that angels are ministering spirits. And they've been sent to minister to us. And so don't Settle for being an angel when you can be an heir with the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, so many passages that testify to the presence and to the power of angels. And there's a whole study of angelology, if you will, that talks about all the mentions of angels in the Bible. I'm impressed By their power. You know, the Bible says that one angel, one angel destroyed 185,000 Assyrians. (coughs) One angel. Think of it. And here God sends Jacob two angels. They were capable of killing 370,000 unbelievers. But rest assured, 400 of Esau's men wasn't any effort on God's part. And that's what we need to realize. Because if the devil can do anything, he will try to make our problem bigger than our God. And biblically, we need to realize that God is greater than them all. Notice that God never comes with less than what we need. 
Isn't that something? He never shortchanges. He never comes up short. He never comes with less than what we need. <clears throat> so there's a big choice. Two angels or 400 men. Well, then we need to trust his promises and rest in his presence. Verse 7 and 8. And sometimes that's easier said than done. This was Jacob's first recorded prayer. Up until this time, there's been a lot of religious talk, but not praying. It's interesting <coughs> that Jacob gave things, spiritual names, but he wasn't in fellowship with the Lord. In other words, he had a religious talk, but he didn't have a religious walk. He was an object of grace, but he hadn't turned directly to the Lord. When I read that, I thought, you know, we need to examine our own lives. Do we have Bible study without prayer? Do we teach and preach without having prayer? Jacob was here by God's express command. And that should have filled him with peace. You know, I've been in the Lord's will and I've been out of the Lord's will. But I tell you what, when you're in the Lord's will, there's peace. And there's a peace that passes understanding. <clears throat> Excuse me. If God brings us into a situation, we need to realize he can surely bring us out. Amen. Amen. Now, he allowed the Hebrew children, to be under the fiery furnace. But what did the king say? He said, didn't we throw three men in there? But there's four. The fourth one is like unto the son of, son of God, that the Lord Jesus Christ was there before they got there, and he was there to get them out. You think of Daniel in the lion's den? Oh, Daniel... Has your God protected you? My God has stopped the mouth of the lion. I love that portion because he's able to stop the mouth of the lion in our lives. Well, we need to realize that the Lord is with us. I read a story about a young man that was disobedient. Couldn't have been me, but it was probably some other kid. And uh, the father told him, he said, son, if you don't straighten up, you're going to spend the night in the attic. And it's cold up there and it's dark up there. And if you don't mind, if you don't listen to me, you're going to spend the night in the attic. And sure enough, he didn't, he didn't mind. And the, Lord, and the father said, okay, son. Get up to the attic. And then his wife said, honey, to the husband, what are you doing? <coughs> he had his pillow and he had a blanket. He said, where are you doing? He said, I'm going up into the attic. He said, I told my son that he's going to spend the night in the dark and in the cold, but I didn't tell him that he'd be there by himself. I'm going to be there with him. You know, the Lord never told us that we wouldn't have some trials, some tribulations. But what he said is, I'll be there with you. So this wasn't a triumphant Jacob. <clears throat> this was a terrified Jacob. And Jacob need to realize that I did, like, that I, what I do is that God's with us whether it's in the dark, whether it's in the cold, whatever it might be. I promise never to leave you nor to forsake you. So Jacob finally remembers the promises of God and then yet he grasps them like somebody going down a river and holding on to the branch. Rather than trusting to the Lord, he wanted to hold on to the things of the Lord. 
You know, we do that a lot, don't we? We're trusting in the Lord. We know he's going to provide. But we grab a branch on our way downstream. Worry is a failure to trust. When I thought about that and read about that, I didn't like it. I hope you don't. But worry is a failure to trust the Lord. A little weak there, but it's still true. Now, verse 9 and 10, we see that Jacob blames the Lord. I think we could, we couldn't count the people who in one way or another have blamed the Lord. I think there's a lot of empty chairs for people who once trusted the Lord, but they feel like God let them down, that God disappointed them. And they don't want to say, oh, listen, I'm mad at God. No, they just saturate the place with their absence, you know. And they begin to hold God accountable, responsible for something that's taken place. Well, at least Jacob acknowledges, I have proved unworthy. I have been and still am unworthy. I believe that to be a healthy attitude. There's a lot of people that presume upon the grace of God. Let me tell you something. When a man thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. I was unworthy and I am unworthy. Only by the blood of Christ can we approach his throne. Well, James 4.10 says, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. You try to stand on your own two feet without him and you're looking for a fall. Isaiah in the temple I think of him and he said, then said I, woe is me for I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts, seeing the Lord high and lifted up. I can't even imagine what Isaiah experienced, but I do remember a Bible conference where a man told John MacArthur, he said, Dr. John, every morning when I get up and I'm shaving, I look in the mirror and Jesus is standing right behind me. John MacArthur wasn't real impressed. He just turned to him and asked him a question. He said, do you keep shaving? Let me tell you something. When you see the Lord high and lifted up, it's going to change our life. It's going to change how we see him. Well, the emptiness of man is evident, but the faithfulness of God is even more so. 1 Peter 5.10 says that he's the God of all grace. And it's so good that Jacob claimed <clears throat> to be the servant of the Lord. Because it's not good enough to just realize, I talked in our class this morning about the most popular passage around is probably John 3.16, right? See it at football games everywhere. For God so loved the world. That's not enough if I don't realize for God so loved me. And God so loved you. And it's not a generic thing. He loved me. And if I was the only lost person on the face of the earth, Jesus would have still gone to the cross and suffered and bled and died for my salvation. Well, we sing, or we used to sing, or sometimes we sing, whosoever surely meaneth me, right? 
And I like the third verse. Oh, what wonderful love. Oh, what grace divine that Jesus should die for me. I was lost in sin for the world I pined, but now I have been set free. Whosoever surely meaneth me. Surely meaneth me. Well, he reminded God of his promises. In verse 11 and 12, uh, he reminds the Lord, Deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother with the children. <coughs> and thou said, and thou said, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And thou Saidest. At first, I thought he's wagging his finger in the face of God. He's reminding God, and and thou said it. Until I cross-referenced, and I read Isaiah forty-three. It says, "I even I am He that blotteth out thy transgressions." For thine own sake, and will not remember thy sins. Now listen to this. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. If God says, remind me, and he does. I believe that he wants us to show him that we heard what he said that we believed it, we incorporated it in our heart. And so we repeat that promise to the Lord. So here is Jacob saying, I fear Esau. Now you have to think about this, and I think there's a sense of humor here. I mean, here he is, with the angels encompassing him. And he said, I'm afraid of Esau. I went to Nigeria on a mission trip with 20 or 30 other pastors. And the people in Lagos, Lagos, Lagos if I can get it out, Nigeria, they were antagonistic against Christians and certainly pastors. And they were armed with bats and everything, and they wanted to beat us badly. And we had two guards on the bus, and they had Uzis. And they got off the bus, and they held those Uzis up, and they went, Sprayed the sky, and these guys scattered. From then on, I sat right between them. <laughs> and I don't know what their given name was, but I called them Michael and Gabriel. <laughs> and they were my own personal angels. Let them other pastors take care of themselves. <laughs> but I had a great deal of trust in them. So I had to think of, here's Jacob. He's concerned about 400 men coming and he's got two angels right next to him. You ever think that that looks a lot like us? God has comforted us God has gathered himself around us and we fear what men can do and don't trust in the power and the presence of the Lord. Well, I'm reminded of Elisha and his young servant. 
And the boy looks out one morning and he sees this great host of the enemy. And he said, alas, master, what shall we do? I think I would have said what Tonto's told the Lone Ranger. What do you mean we, pale face? <laughs> but he said, what are we going to do? And Elisha prayed. And he said, Lord, open this young man's eyes that he might see that greater are they that be for us than they that be against us. And the Lord opened his eyes and let him see the heavenly hosts that surrounded him and protected them. You know, we can ask anything according to his promises. Not my will, but thine be done. Now in verses 13 through 16, he's bribing his brother. And that's interesting, but sad. You know, Jacob had had a good prayer time with the Lord. And then he went back to scheming. And he forgot all about God's presence. Does that sound familiar? We have a great prayer time with the Lord. And then all of a sudden we take it back. We sing, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. We take them to the Lord and we pick them up and take them back with us. And Jacob then forgets all of God's promises. I don't know if you know of George Miller who had the orphanage and a lot of people say that there were times they didn't have anything to eat and George Miller would pray and there'd be a knock on the door and somebody would bring food for all the children. And so somebody asked him, they said, George, what is the most important part of prayer? And he replied, the, the 15 minutes after I've said amen. The 15 minutes after I've said amen, because you know that's when the devil strikes, right? We're all caught up, caught up we're excited about this, and then the devil starts throwing his fiery darts. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you ever pray, ask God to intercede, and then go about to solve it yourself. Jacob was a character. I mean, you got to look at it. He was a schemer. But you got to love him. You got to love him. The Bible says that he separated the bribe. He separated the animals by droves. In other words, he put the goats out there and he had some servants behind him. Then he had some sheep and he had some people behind him, servants. And then the camels, the cattle, the she-asses. And here's what we see. Goats were of the least value. Maybe not in South Texas, Cabrito's a wonderful thing. But uh, they had the least value. Sheep were more val valuable, camels still more, and cattle and the she-asses were most useful and more highly prized. And each group from the least to the best was highly calculated. Jacob was thinking, how much would it take to satisfy Esau? Maybe he wouldn't have it to give it all. Maybe Esau would just take the goats and he'd have the sheep left over. Or maybe he'd take the goats and the sheep and he'd have the rest of it left over. And it was divided up in sections. I thought about that. And when I was in full-time evangelism, 
Billy Graham was coming to San Antonio, and I was excited about it. All the local churches were supporting the crusade, but I didn't realize that meant that none of the local churches were going to have revivals. They were all going to the crusade. And so I was fortunate enough that a large San Antonio church asked me to serve eight to 12 weeks before they, while they were calling a pastor. And the head of the committee, you got to have a committee in most churches, came to me and was going to discuss salary. And he said, Brother Eichels, we're prepared to pay you this much a month. But if that's not enough, we can go up another $400. We want to give you this, but if it's not enough, we can give you this. Well, whatever they gave me was more than what I had. And let me, I'll be honest, let's go on record. I took the goat price. <laughs> but God, there's a lot of people that give him less than their best, hoping that he'll be satisfied. While we're there, let me talk about Christmas for Christ. <laughs> Don't give God your leftovers. Give him your best. It's his birthday that we celebrate. Well, I believe that that church and a lot of others followed Jacob's example. They start with a goat amount and would see how it all turned out. Well... Jacob went from being an heir to a beggar, verse 17 through 19. And I thought about that and I said, don't you know that the angels above him must have wondered, what's with this guy? I mean, we've seen how God has blessed him. We have heard the promises that God has given him and now he, here he is acting like a beggar like he doesn't have any of these promises of God do you know that you and I confuse the angels in heaven I believe we've received all the promises someone said that they dreamed that they had died and they looked at heaven, and here was just a mountain of presence. They were all wrapped, and they had bows. And he asked St. Peter, what are all these gifts? And he said, those are answered prayer that nobody asked for. He went from an heir to a beggar. I think of several stories there. There was one man after the Civil War that went around town as a beggar. And he always talked about his friend, Abraham Lincoln. And finally, one guy got tired of it. And he said, you don't even know President Lincoln. He said, yes, I do. He gave me this letter. And the guy got the letter and he read it. And he said, you're not a beggar. You've got a pension coming in from the United States government. And that's like a lot of us. We're, we've got the blessings of the Lord, and we're walking along like a beggar. Others have been found with a tattered coat and six bank books sewed in the hem and eating on crust, living on crusts of bread. That's us. You know, we've been blessed by the Lord and we live like a beggar. I love our attic benevolence ministry and I love how the Lord provides. There was a time that our grocery bill was a lot less Jill than what it is right now. But, uh, we were buying groceries direct from a wholesaler 
at about $2,000 a pop. And we were real close on it. And there was some people who had delivered some clothes. And when we take what we can use, we make sure that it goes out to other agencies. But somebody brought some clothes that you wouldn't let your grandkids play house in. I mean, they must have been from the early 1900s. And one of the ladies that was going through them picked up a dress, and it was rather heavy. And she felt something in the hem, and she took out the hem and opened it up, and there was 20 $100 bills. $2,000 paid for the groceries that week. How God provides. Amen? Amen. Well, from an heir to a beggar. And then there was that matter of appeasing the world. In verse 20 through 23. And this is the first time appeasing is mentioned in the word of God. It literally means to cover. And with Jacob, he was trying to appease or he was trying to cover his past transgressions. He was hoping that this bribe would cover up or cover over his offenses. Was this a man who behaved like the angels had not come? Was this a man who was acting as if he had not prayed, as though the promises of God were worthless? Jacob had pleaded the covenant that God had made with Abraham and what God had made with Isaac and how God had promised him. And he reminded God that he was acting under divine orders. He had ass assumed an attitude of deep personal humility and he had cried out for deliverance. And an hour later, he's running hither and yon like a dog chasing his tail. And he can't get the answer to the solution. And he tries to appease the world. And sometimes so do we. Well, this brings us to our time of invitation. And the Bible speaks in Hebrews of those that watch for your souls. So by God's charge, I need to be frank, clear, and compassionate. And today, if you're not saved, if you're not sure that if you died today that you'd be with the Lord, that you'd go to heaven, may I say to you with all the love in my heart that today you either chose Jesus or you choose hell. One way or the other. That's strong, isn't it? But God so loved you and me that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but that have everlasting life. And you know, we have baptism tonight. And if you're saved, you ought to follow the Lord in believer's baptism. Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. <clears throat> Jesus came to John the Baptist and he wanted him to baptize him. And John the Baptist said, I, I don't need to baptize you. I need to be baptized of you. And Jesus said, suffer it or allow it to be so now. Because it fulfills all righteousness. And so John baptized the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says that as Jesus was being baptized, 
that the Spirit of God descended upon him and God the Father spoke and he said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. You know that even today when somebody who knows the Lord follows the Lord in scriptural baptism, it pleases the Lord. Maybe you're here, you're saved, you're identified, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a church family. And if God leads, we encourage you to come and to plant your life here as we try to reach our community and our world for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think it's in God's plan for you to be a butterfly believer and to kind of flit from bush to bush. He wants you to light, to plant your life, and not only serve him in this place, but from this place. So as we pray and we ask and allow the Holy Spirit of God to dwell, to deal with every heart, would you let go and let God have his way? Let's stand and pray. Father, we do thank you for your word for your power, for your presence, Lord, for what you want to do and for what you will do if we'll allow you to have your way. And Father, I pray that we'd not strive against your spirit, that we'd not grieve your Holy Spirit, and we'd not quench your Holy Spirit but that we'd be open to you and your wooing and your leadership, your desire to see us come to you. Father, give people the courage to step out, to let go and to let you have your way and we'll meet them at the front and to pray with them. Father, we pray that you'd cast the devil from our midst and may Jesus be glorified today. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. God speaks. Will you come? Just like you are. You're stepping out. You're letting go. You're trusting him. <coughs> Lamb of God, Come I'm coming. To thee, o Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul. Let him have his way. But mercy and grace, my freedom. Lord, I'm going to trust you. And now to glory in your Lamb of God, I'm coming. Lamb of God, I come. I come. Let's bow our heads. Just a moment, the invitation will be over. Don't run from the Lord. Don't put off for a convenient season which may never come. If you're not saved, be saved today. Today is the day of salvation. Harden not your heart. If you're saved and not identified, don't put it off. It fulfills all righteousness. The whole world will know that you believe in his death, his burial, his resurrection. If you're saved and identified and don't have a church home 
and God's led you here, we welcome you. Will you come today? This verse for you. Oh, to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I surrender. Oh, to him I surrender, I and I'm coming today. I'm not going to put it off. Love and trust him in his presence daily. Sing it to the Lord. I surrender all. I surrender all. Thank you. You may be seated. Pat and Karen Lloyd come this morning. They were here for a long time, and their daughter went to a Christian school, and they supported their daughter, and she has turned into a lovely, lovely young lady. But now they're back. They've come home. This is where they belong. Amen. If you rejoice with them coming, let them know. Amen. Good to be in this house. Mark? You want to do the rest of them too? <laughs> Just want to highlight, there's a lot in the bulletin you want to call your attention to. And before I forget it, regarding the Christmas for Christ, one of our members printed out some really pretty envelopes, and they're in the back on the boxes to, for your Christmas for Christ offering. So they're there for your use. We are glad, uh, grateful for our guests here today that worship with us. If there's any way we can minister to you or your family, uh, please make a note on your guest card so that we can um, take care of that. Um, tonight, 6 o'clock, Lord's Supper and Baptism. And so if you're a candidate, be here. It's a great time to gather around the table and have communion together. Tomorrow on the 20th... Um, Alzheimer's Caregiver Support Group is meeting at 10 o'clock in the Education Building, Room 9. If you know someone that can benefit, uh, please encourage them to come. Uh, it's open to all. Um, Bible studies are canceled next week with Thanksgiving week, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So also no supper Wednesday night. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't come to church on Wednesday night. It just means there's no supper on Wednesday night. Um, and um, let's see, I think that's all I had, and I think Ruth Ann has an announcement about the ladies' Christmas dinner. Thanks. Ladies, I know many of you have already purchased tickets for the Christmas dinner, and I am so glad that you have done that. Let me give you just a couple notes on the side. If you bought a ticket last week and did not get a table assignment at that time, would you please return to the table at the end of the worship or at the back of the worship center this morning and get your table assignment. We'd hate for you to come in and have nowhere to sit. So if you would do that, we'd appreciate it. There are tickets still available. If when you go to the ticket uh, table, you'll go to the right side first, purchase your ticket, then step to the left and get your table assignment. That will really be helpful. We are really looking forward to it. One other thing that we need to be aware of, if you bought a ticket for yourself or someone else and you have found out that you are not going to use that ticket, if you have an extra you're not going to use, would you please return it to the ladies and they will give you a refund for that ticket. And that will possibly allow someone else to come who might not be able to come if we go beyond the capacity that we can connect excuse me, can accommodate. So thank you. We are looking forward to this time together in celebration uh, as we begin the celebration of our Lord's birth. Uh, that's Friday the 1st. So we're looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Let's uh, stand together. James Morris, if you'll come and close us out in prayer, and then we'll sing our way out. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come into your presence and we ask, O oh Lord, that you continually love us and use us for your kingdom.
We pray too, Lord, that you'd continue to bring to us the sheep that need a place to be shepherded. We ask, O oh Lord, that as we continue to think of our nation, that you might indeed institute a revival, that there might be thousands upon thousands who would come to the Lord in this hour, and that, Lord, we would be so grateful if we could be but a great part of that in our local area. Bless us now, Lord, as we separate and go our separate ways, and indeed watch over us in the days ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of King. oh praise forever to the King of King. We'll see you tonight at 6.